Okay, hopefully this is recording now. Uh, I did this once already and it wasn't recording, so there are some steps that are already completed. However, I will still go over them. Um, you're going to want to look at your single point harness release right here. Alright, make sure that there are no twists in the lanyard for the release handle. Alright, make sure the release handle is routed through here. And the more important uh, thing to note here on the adjustable demon attaching straps is you want the white through the triangle link, green through white, white, or uh, sorry, red through green, red through the grommet, cable through the red, stow it. Okay, same thing on both sides. Make sure the adjustable demon attaching strap uh, opening gate is facing down. Okay, and you can flip your harness over at that point. All right, the purpose of this video is to help people in my unit uh, with rigging their rucks. Some of them don't come from uh, like Big Army where this is practiced more. And so I'm jumping every month or every other month. They don't seem to retain some of the knowledge, so this is to help aid those soldiers. Now, when you grab your pack, first off, uh, some people, another thing, it, must, it might just be from lack of experience, but some of the guys, uh, they bring these packs that are like super thin and, you know, it's as if they just threw like a 45 pound weight in there. And while, yeah, you meet the weight requirement, uh, your pack looks like shit and it's not nice and filled out and round and it doesn't allow for a proper rigging with the equipment. So with that being said, make sure you got a nice filled out ruck, proper weight, at least 35 pounds. Take the bottom of your ruck, place it up towards the adjustable demon attaching straps. All right, purpose, reason for that. So once you pick it up to uh, attach it to your equipment, it will be properly positioned on your body. Now you see the harness down here, you got the rectangular shape. Um, you wanna make sure that you attach your E-tool or whatever a little bit better than I have here, okay? You're gonna wanna place that in that area. All right, you're going to reach around on the sides, pull the straps up around it, make sure it's nice and seated. You'll fix it later when you flip it over. Then you're going to come down here, starting from the point of origin, which is down here. Okay. The Xbox stitching, grab the equipment retainer strap, make sure there are no twists. All right, once you've got no twists, you're going to take this. You should be able to see this little hole right here. In the, in the in the frame. All right, it's the largest one at the top. You're gonna feed it through. Again, double check, no twists. All right, big uh, big error a lot of people make here. They just want to route it straight over the shoulder strap. Okay, that's what wrong looks like. This is what right looks like. Okay. No twists. Make sure you get that straightened out up here. And you're gonna route it to the opposite side. Okay. Same thing down here. No twists, starting from the point of origin. Okay, again, the largest opening here at the top of the frame. Feed it through. Still no twists. I'm gonna route it underneath or on the outside of the shoulder strap. Some people use different verbiage. Okay, now you got those routed through. No twists. You're gonna come back up to the top. All right, you're gonna grab these friction adapters on the opposite side that the strap, the equipment retainer strap, comes from. Okay. And what we're gonna do? You can see this oval here, this big cutout, biggest one at the bottom. All right. You're gonna take the equipment retainer strap. Right here. You're gonna feed it through there. All right, you should be able to see it. Biggest cutout at the bottom. All right. So, I'm gonna grab it, ride it through the friction adapter. All right, some people like to pull this as tight as I can and then try to put the quick release in. Um, I do not do that. I like to do this. Put the quick release in now. Alright. 
that allows me to um, play with a little bit. You can manage the quick release and pull it tight at the same time. All right, so now all I've done is I'm pulling the quick release back through. All right, if you pull the lower portion of this quick release, that's what's going to make it tight. You pull this to get rid of the excess here, so nice and tight. Get rid of the excess. Nice and tight. Get rid of the excess. You're going to want about three to four fingers in here, depending on the size of your hand, how tight you pull it. Make sure the tighter the better. All right. Same thing on the opposite side. If you're running under the equipment retainer strap, it's going to feed through that big oval cutout down at the bottom of the frame. Okay. I'm going to route it through this friction adapter here. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'll put in my quick release now. It's easier. All right, I'm gonna reach back through this oval and grab the quick release. I'm gonna pull it through. Get rid of the excess. Pull it through. Just want to get it as tight as possible. That's what I'm doing right now. All right, that should be good. Now there are some portions of the pack. Um, for the purpose of this video, I can't recall all of them right off the top of my head at this moment. You can S roll some areas, and you can just fold some areas. This is one of those areas you're gonna want to S fold. All right, it's considered safer if it gets caught on something wrapped up. Uh, given that it's the S fold or accordion fold. Um, everything should fall free a lot easier. It, won't, it shouldn't get caught or stuck on anything. Secure it with a retainer band. Alright. Three to four. Secured. Alright, same thing with the other one. speed this up in the video also since I'm wasting a lot of time you're gonna want to make sure that if you notice around my pack I've got a lot of tape all over the place all right that's to secure all those free running ends all right you don't want all that when it comes time to jump just creates a possibility for a um, Safety issues, safety hazards. Okay, I want to try and secure all free running ends. Think, like that's not a big deal, right there. But everywhere else, you want to try and tape that stuff down, right? If you if you get into areas like this and you just don't have enough tape, maybe your unit doesn't have any, or you're in your room, your house. All right, try and make some good use of the webbing. All right, just try and improvise. That being said, uh, you can flip your pack over now. Come to these uh, these leg straps. The quickest route, most direct route. So you'll see some guys they want to come all the way over here. It looks nice, but this works too. Okay, just straight up. All right, same thing on the other side. Some of you guys might get like a quarter twist, half twist, whatever you want to call it. And these leg straps, um, that's okay. It's actually kind of natural given that they're gonna wrap around your leg. So don't be too alarmed. Make sure you pull the excess out of this cross strap here. Now these straps can be rolled. I roll them because it saves space and it lays more flat once you stow them. I think an S fold would just look really sloppy up here, especially if you don't take the time to actually make it look nice. Okay. 
Okay, so now to review what you've done. So your Xbox stitchings should be relatively even. You can see mine are a little, a little off, but you want to have them at least on the bottom of your pack. All right, you want to have your triangle link it through the white, or white routed through, I'm sorry. You want the green to go through the white. You want the red to go through the green, okay? And you want the red to go through the grommet. You want the cables to come through the red and go into those stove pockets. Um, moving on, make sure that the, uh, you got the release handle routed through properly. All right, it's really not hard. Just make sure there's no twists, okay? Again, centering your whole harness on your e-tool or sustainment pouch, whatever you got, preferably an e-tool. Routed through the biggest opening on the shoulder frame. To the outside or underneath, whatever you want to call it. Okay, if you see straps coming over the top, it's wrong. You've got the quick releases in here with the friction adapters. You've got three to four fingers um, width here. You secured this with a retainer band. You routed it through the openings down at the bottom. The only openings at the bottom. Okay. And there you are at the Xbox stitching again. All right. Uh, some guys, myself included, you can take some 550 cord, um, attach it to your frame, let you secure this stuff or your lowering line for later on when you're moving around, carrying your pack, pick it up. These don't fling around. Some guys get hit in the eye, whatever. It's just not fun. And it's too easy to do. All right. Moving on to the fun stuff. Okay. Now when it comes to the lowering line. It's not a race unless you're going to jump master school. All right. Just take your time. Some guys uh, don't don't ride this all the way out to the end, all right? Because if you start doing that and you start building, you're just gonna keep getting further and further. And when you're done, you're gonna have a bunch of stuff sticking out the end. So it's better to just go ahead and cut it short, right about there, right before this, right before this seam starts. Okay. Nothing you can do about the first one; it runs all the way to the end. But and I'm sorry, this isn't gonna be an aesthetic aesthetically pleasing portion of the video just kind of gonna get it done I'm not doing any magic tricks with my fingers or my hands I'm just making everything nice and tight placing my thumbnail at the end when I get to the end run my thumb down to what I have existing the same thing on the other side push down replace it Fold it over, push down again, slide it down. That's all I'm doing. And hopefully, when you're done, it'll all match up, line up perfect. You won't have to do it again. Also, what you can do the night before, or uh, if you are trying to go to Jump Master School, one of the tricks that uh, someone told me was you can do this perfect uh, get it nice and wet or don't get it wet whatever stick it in your freezer for a few days you're not going to be using it and that should put the creases in the edges and make them very defined so that you know when you go to do this again in the future the next time you do it you got to elongate your lowering line the creases are extremely evident and it should just fold right up there were some guys I went to jump master school it looked like I don't know, someone took a pencil and drew just a zigzag on the floor. Their lowering line was so crisp and defined edges. It's crazy. Almost done, hopefully. Alright, again, don't try to speed up when you get to the end. I can feel myself trying to go a little faster because I'm recording this, but it's really not going to help you out. Once you start getting this high, it's really easy for this to fall over and Start looking like a soup sandwich. Should be, should be.
should be okay. You can see the hook right here. I'm almost perfect. All right, so I'm gonna pull a little bit of excess from the end there. Let's see, now, granted, this isn't even all the way down, but it's also not protruding, so it works for me. There's no real trick to this part either. I just kind of take the edge with the hook side up, try to pull it all the way over. Again, I don't have a magic trick. If you guys got one, please tell me. Feels like. So, it could be much prettier, much more pretty. Get the idea. Okay, so once you've got that, Key thing here, north to south, south to north, never east and west. So what that means is I made an X, right? Bring that X down as low as you can. By bringing it lower, that allows you to get your lowering line over a little bit easier and stow it over here on the frame. All right, the way I like to do this Instead of feeding this whole thing underneath and possibly messing something up, I just take the loop in, feed it through the bottom. Again, north to south, south to north, just never east to west. Just come through the loop in, try to do this with one hand. Be careful when you're doing this too, don't, don't just pull on this in case some people try to do that. And then you just wasted all that hard, frustrating work. Right. So we've got a girth hitch here. It's going north to south. Okay. to go on the left side, jumper's left side. So imagine your pack being hooked up to your body right now. Okay, adjustable D-ring attaching straps are up here. This is your left side, okay. I'm gonna go over shoulder strap this time, all right? So if you can't remember, just imagine trying to put on your left shoulder strap. If you can't, because this is in the way, then you've done it right, all right? If you can put this on, you've done something wrong, because this should be going over top of it. Gonna get two retainer bands. All right, common practice is you wanna find the center of your frame here, that crossbar here. You wanna just have one band on one side, one band on the other side of it. Feed it through a little portion, one little open slit. All right, you've got both ends. You're gonna take this end, stick it up through this end. All right, grab it. Pull it up. See? And now you can run your lowering line through. Again, being cautious that when you pull it through, don't just pull. Alright, you might pull it out. So, by doing this a lot lower, okay, that allows you to get over here a lot easier. If you've got the cross all the way up here, it's going to be a little bit harder to get your lowering line all the way down here. Be 
careful when you do that too. Most of you know it's really easy to pop one of those, so even doing this right here. Again, this is when this 550 cord comes in hand. You just take the lowering line and attach it as well. It's not flopping around or causing any damage, possibly breaking some of the equipment. All right. <laughs> 